welcome to the MBS show, episode number 137. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. James? Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, you go tend to your Mexican food. And joining us also today is Rom. Sup? Hey there, Rom. How are you doing? Slowly but surely, got amazing news this week. Ah. One, I quit my job. <laughs> Two, my senpai noticed me and even drew my OC. Oh, that's cool. I've been uh, bang asking me for days. Are you talking about that's the, the drawing with uh, Andy? No, no, not that one. Oh. No. That's Another cool. senpai. Ah, yeah. all right. Cool, 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 cool. So, how are you enjoying the Mexican food? Yeah, that sounds tasty. <laughs> yep. Don't have too much beans. Don't have too much beans. And our guest for this week is Captain Sixty Four. Hello. Hey there, Cap. So, um, funny thing here right now. Uh, mm-hmm. If I'm guessing the audience are wondering where's James and Rom right about now because well things are a bit too quiet for our yeah here. it's it's pretty quiet um okay so here's the thing right all right so you, you guys don't know we actually recording this in a mexican restaurant i <laughs> we're just really good at record uh, editing out the people in the back i yeah. so literally James and Ron went to the restroom. They just haven't gone back. This is a Spanish restaurant. They order lots and lots of beans. They're going to probably be there for a long time. So, you know. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, when, I mean, when you have to go, you have to go. So yep. we're like, okay, fine. Yep, mm-hmm. You guys go. <laughs> we're going to try to do this on our own. Thanks, guys. Yep, yep. <laughs> I told you not to get those beans, guys. Seriously. Who knew you have Mexican food in Hawaii? We're in the same place. It just sounds like we're in different places. I know. But anywho, um, with that confusion aside, how are you doing, Cap? I'm doing well, man. By the way, for those who don't know, yes, I do live in Hawaii. Mm. Aloha. Aloha. And other stereotypical Hawaiian things to say. Dude. No? They don't say that? No, that's California, actually. Oh, okay. One would be, Aloha Miki Maka is Hawaiian to say, to say Merry Christmas to you. Oh, okay. Wow. No comment. <laughs> but yeah, anywho. That was, that was awesome. I, I did not expect that. But yeah, so anywho, Cap, how are you doing, man? I'm doing fine, man. It It's good in this Mexican restaurant. I got good food. You know, the waitress was pretty good. So, I mean, what can I say? No, I'm kidding. It's, <laughs> it's doing very well right now. I'm doing very well. How about you, Norman? I'm doing okay. Time zone difference as a site uh, is going to be strange. It's going to be strange. Yeah. Yeah, here's the thing for the audience. Norman lives in Malaysia. I mean, I don't know how you can get that except for looking at the title. <laughs> um, and I live in Hawaii. And so literally what could happen is that I could dig for my place right now. And I would dig and I'd somehow be in Norman's recording studio. Problem is, you know, there's like this big flame ball in the center uh, yeah. of the earth the so core, i can't just like mm-hmm. yeah you know the core that's like the slang term for it it's more like big flame ball anyway yeah that's that's a science term look yeah, up yeah, um probably. but but yeah. anywho, but anywho um, let's carry on uh, before yeah. we officially start the show cap we need to ask you the four important questions and huh? question number one is favorite character i'll see well, what what else can I say? You will see, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you see it in the back. You can hardly see it. You know, the animators, the animators. I got to admit, they would. I have no idea what they were doing animating my OC in that background. And you know, in in season five. Mm. Oh wait, season five's not out. Oh spoilers! Oh. Uh, I'm gonna get fired from Hasbro. My father works at Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, seriously though, my favorite character is Derpy. Derpy mm. hooves. Awesome. So, the is a legit answer. That's cool, that's cool. Yeah. So, what about your favorite episode? Favorite episode? I would have to say, uh, as much as I would love to say uh, Last Roundup, as much as I like that episode because it's derpy and I have derpy bias, <laughs> um, I have to say that um, my favorite episode has to be Pinky Pride. Pinky Pride is pretty good. Yeah, it's... I find him one of the best Pinkie Pie episodes. Mm, true, true. It has Weird L to boot, so yeah, it's awesome all the way. <laughs> yeah, he did a great job, actually. Like, you can tell when he's singing, it's him, but when he's doing his vo- um, the regular acting, voice acting, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound that much like him, actually. 
Yeah. I mean, just the voice acting. He, before this, he did um, do a movie, and that movie was called UHF. And you all who's listening to this, go find it. I don't know how, I don't care how, just go get it, because it's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Uh, just go, just go, just go. Unfortunately, okay. that was the movie that almost destroyed his career. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, because that movie came out at the same time as one of the Indiana Jones movies. So nobody really uh, paid attention to that. You mean the one with the new fridge? Uh, I don't remember. Is it um, the third one, I think? Uh, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay, but, the yeah. one with Sean Connery. Mm, yeah. Because it came out during the same time. So mm-hmm. people were kind of hyped to go see Indiana Jones instead of Weird Al. Hmm. Yeah, figure. like... Yeah, to be fair, it wasn't Indiana Jones, and the third movie was okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can't say much because, well, it's Jones. You can't blame yeah. people. Like, huh. but but anyhow, putting that aside, how do you became a fan of the show? Oh, um, it's actually interesting. So, um, the way that I got into the show was, um. I remember I was a big, big fan of this site called That Guy with the Glasses. And I remember one of the people who used to make videos on there, his name was CR. Um, some people may know him as Chad Rocco on DeviantArt. Um, that's his name. And he was doing a retrospective of the entire uh, generations, four generations. Mm-hmm. And so he did two videos, one video that had generation one, two, and three, and then another one um, that had generation four. Now, CR is not, uh, he doesn't like upload one video and then the next day he uploads another. All right. he, um, he uploads something, then like two or three weeks later, he'll find the next video. And so once he did the retrospective of Generation 1 through 3, I was just like, hey, I might as well um, just watch the fourth generation before he does a video. And this is a week afterwards, actually. Uh And I remember um, this was around the time right before Season 2, actually. Um, I would think that it was during um, uh, Return of Harmony Episode 1 and Return of Harmony. Uh, Harmony episode two, mm-hmm. um, part two. Um, but I think I actually became before that. I remember I was watching the show online. I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see the show. You know, I I'm okay when it comes to girl shows. So I'm like, yeah, sure, let's see what this like. Hmm. And I watched the first episode, then I watched the second episode. And I watched the third episode, and then I and then um, two or three days later, I actually finished season one. Uh, yeah, I finished season one actually. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I was just marathoning ponies. Um, oh, yeah, you, you and didn't even great. realize it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I kind of did. I I separated them into different like how many episodes I'm going to watch on that day. Oh boy! Because I, I did it in two or three days, I believe. Wow. Um. Well, it's not as much as trying to do it today. And now it's 80 episodes. Good so... luck marathoning that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So now, when was the episode that made you click? Like, oh my god, I'm a fan of the show. What is the episode that made me click? And want me to really watch it? Um, I have to say that the episode that really, really made me interested in the show was probably, uh, God, this is such a hard one. I think at the time it was Party of One. That was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Out of yeah. all of them. I mean, okay, I have a derpy bias and I also have a pinky bias. Okay. <laughs> As you know, my favorite episode is a pinky episode. Oh, that's convenient. Oh, <laughs> true, true. Okay, so that, that's cool. Uh, now, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Um... My parents, I remember, I actually did confront them about being a brony. And I was like, hey, uh, dad, um, mother, um, I didn't say it like that. But mm-hmm. I was like, hey, I really like the show about... Uh, Candy Color Unicorns. My Little Ponies, yeah. yeah. And they are just like, all right. Rock cool. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, um, they they're just like okay, like they didn't take that much 
into it. They're just like, oh, you like the show. Okay. Mm, okay, so that's cool. That's cool. So, yeah. well, thanks, Cap, for answering the four basic questions before we can start the show. No problem. Yeah. So let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. So, Cap, a bit redundant, but mm-hmm. mind introducing yourself to the people who don't know who you are and what you do? Um. Yeah, sure, man. Um, I'm just a guy who likes to draw silly horses, um, and, like, talk to people about silly horses, and sing about silly horses, <laughs> although I don't post the latter at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, Cap, uh, mm-hmm. basically you're an artist then, alright? Um, yeah, pretty basically. So, if, if I'm not mistaken, you're mm-hmm. also the guy who is responsible for the... I won't say birth. Birth is so wrong. For starting Team OK, right? Well, the thing is that yes and no. Oh. Um. Here's the story behind Team OK. Um. Thank you for interviewing them, by the way. <laughs> um. I can be on because it would be like five o'clock my time when the interview was starting. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was not in there. But I remember I was live streaming on a Saturday. And apparently, um, one of my friends, um, Rangir, was also streaming. Mm-hmm. And he was streaming my stream, um, and we were just uh, chatting with each other. Um, and a bunch of his people came to my live stream, and we were talking about that. And eventually, we're just like, hey, how about we have um, like a little group of people who do like live streams and stuff, so that we can like talk to each other <laughs> with voices. Uh, and um like sure and so like um here's the reason why it's hard to determine the owner of team okay because technically the person who made the skype chat was a gal named shadowlux mm-hmm. um but the conception was being talked about in my stream and rain stream <laughs> and potentially in ticular pony stream uh, okay so who are the real founder? We have no idea. But, so basically, um, it's a mix it's match of everyone yeah. then. Yeah, it's a big smash of it, of like a lot of people, basically. All right, all right, all right. So at least you guys were part of the very first few, right? It was the exact start of it. Because I remember a lot of the people joined a few days afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um. But I remember the original crew comprised of myself, Rain, Lux. Oh. Um, I think Anti joined the first day, mm-hmm. I think. Um, maybe a few days afterward. I may be getting that wrong. But, <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah. Uh, the original crew comprised of like uh, five people or something. And now it, it's gone to 50 plus. Oh, yeah. I mean... <clears throat> Uh, being a part of the crew was interesting. Just being part of the crew. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty interesting how OK has developed because um, some people have left for various reasons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, just like a real big group. <laughs> oh yep. And we had plenty of drama actually since the start. Mm-hmm. Um, funnily enough, a few days afterward, there was like some fight between one of our p- people and another one of our people. The team always had drama and. Uh, people left sometimes, and so we're just like, eh, we just try to have fun as we can. And now, like, we keep on adding our own chats. <laughs> so it's just like, if you like this part of Team OK, here you go. <laughs> mm. Well, it's it's a group of friends, to be exact. I mean, Team OK, yeah. if I understand right, was always there to promote friendship and whatnot, right? Yes, and Harmony and Rainbows, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, um... It was originally comprised uh, so that all of the people who are doing live streams can just, like, talk and be, like, friendly and stuff and, like, make friends and communicate in a good and fast way and kind of consistently. And so that's what we did. We just had a bunch of streamers, a bunch of users, a bunch of other artists and other streamers, and we just compiled them into one place. That's just the thing. We made it so that all of, like, the cool people... All the cool kids in class. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like it was like all of the friends, like friends of friends. Um, I remember Anti like got a lot of people oh. uh, at the start, and then those people got other people. Yeah, and those people got other people. But anyway, this sounds uh, like a pyramid scheme. 
Yeah, it's a very elaborate pyramid scheme <laughs> that fortunately has declined. <laughs> uh, but overall, um, from what I seen of the group, it's pretty. It's a pretty okay place. It's a pretty awesome place. People hang oh, out. Okay. Yeah, people go there. People hang out. People talk about their stuff. I mean, it's not all yeah. serious. It's and it's not all fun in game. Sometimes when you guys need to be serious, you. Do a lot of uh, yeah. You do a lot of fundraisers and whatnot. Yeah, funnily enough, that that had no idea with us actually. Um, The way that um, we nickname it OK Network, Mm -hmm. and with OK Network, that was actually comprised when we were doing Colusty. Oh. Um, For those who don't know, Colusty is uh, a um, a fundraising event that has all the horse famous artists and not so horse famous artists, but were invited by their friends. And they just draw um, things that people donated. Like, uh, not that things that people donated, that would be just a bunch of dollar bills. Mm. But uh, thing people would donate money and then they would request something. And we had like a doc and everything. It was so professional. Although, funnily enough, we made okay in kind of spite <laughs> <laughs> of Colossi. Because like, people who've done Colossi before thought that it wasn't as good as the previous Colesti and there was like this big thing, big drama thing that was happening secretly. But because we had that drama, we became close friends and uh that's when actually James joined Team OK. So after the whole Team OK network and charity stream, you guys also have other things besides that, right? Like the just general tomfoolery we have yeah, you can hear a lot of okay calls from the people that were doing it at the time. Like I remember Rain with Rain Gear, one of our friends. He used to stream a lot, and we used to be in the calls in the backdrop. And you could always hear us from there. Um, Anti and Antiquary Pony had music, so we, we he couldn't hear us. But that was pretty good for some cases. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like okay itself. Um, it's funny that you mentioned the seriousness and the silliness parts that it's an equal group Mm -hmm. because originally we made it not to be that serious. In fact, we made it to be very Mm non-serious, just a bunch of friends having fun. It just turned to that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but you know, I, I think to have this balance there is quite awesome because, well, you have a bunch of goobers hanging around, but when Mm -hmm. it comes, when it's go time, everybody gets serious and work together. Yeah, and it's interesting because even, like, our new members, the people that we just get, they get highly involved, too, when it comes to this stuff. I mean, not everybody's active in OK. We have 50 members, but that doesn't mean everybody's active. Oh, yeah, true. But, yeah. True. Yeah, I mean, but still, it's one of those situations where, like, I remember in the Team OK call, Cards Against Humanity. That's all. Oh, yeah, <laughs> during James' stream. James' stream or even just derping Lies. around. It's, yeah. yeah. Not even any anyone stream. It's just derping around, like in the call. I mean, it's just totally f- insane. Just playing cards against Equestria, that is, and just talking about the game or just reading the game. Oh boy, moments have been moments so have been recorded. Triggered. Yep. Yeah, um, and it's funny because um, I believe we have our own deck now. Oh God, really? Um, well, it's not like an okay deck, but it's like a regular's deck or something oh, uh, yeah, that yeah. somebody was trying to make. Yeah, and, yeah. um, like you can see like Twilight and NL- R, mm. that's one of our members, yeah. mm-hmm. um, who also is a mod for Everfree Radio. Mm-hmm. Um, he has his own card, so obviously oh, yeah. there's something there. Yeah, I mean, I think he did, uh, or he had friends way back when, uh, you know, it's just stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it's still fun, still fun. Oh yeah, it's so fun. Like we, the thing with OK is that we may be obnoxious to others because we have a lot of inner jokes mm. and jokes that people will not get. For example, it was Cards Against Humanity at first, then we moved over to Cards Against Equestria. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we were doing Cards Against Humanity, we would usually get a playing card. Oh yeah, and every time, in order to win, every time if you wanted just an auto win, you just put liar plushie. <laughs> there. <laughs> I hope we don't have to censor that because uh, of the content. I mean, but yeah, I mean, if people know, if people know, if people know, they don't. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Very okay. So yeah, um, auto yeah. win. <laughs> yeah, no, it's an auto win. Um, and so we 
always say not the freaking liar plushie. <laughs> 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 oh, not the liar plushie. Anything but the liar plushie. Yeah. And so, like, a lot of, like, the little lore that we used to have... By the way, yes, Team OK has lore. <laughs> <laughs> we have our own universe, apparently. Wow. And um, we used to have, like, r- ranks, too. But there was, like, no system. It was uh, just like, oh, yeah, um, myself and uh, one of uh, one of the older elder members. Not elder <laughs> as in, like, he's in retirement, but elder as in... <laughs> the elder gods. Elder. Yeah, elder gods. Um, <laughs> it was just um, nickname Livestream and I as the elder gods and then um and take the pony ring gear and myself would be the triforce of clouds <laughs> by the way all these names were by me <laughs> and funnily enough you want to know where okay the name comes from wait where is it where it comes from was on the day that we made the um the original group mm-hmm. when lux or anybody tried to ask me a question or like um not like ask me a question but um they just okay. want a response from me mm-hmm. I just went, okay. And so they kept on responding, like, okay, 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 okay. So and so okay. It was really just, it's like, yeah, that's where we got it. It's just like, team okay. Team mm. okay. Okay. <laughs> and, and nobody could disagree. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, oh, wow. that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, no. It came from me just, like, how I pronounced okay. And everybody thought it was funny, so. Okay, so, I mean... Uh, is it so? Is the group still a close group, or is it anyone can join kind of situation? Oh no, no, no! It's still uh, an open group. It's just that we don't really get anybody because we kind of realize that the group is way too big. Mm, <laughs> so basically, I mean, it's kind of a secret society. If you know this person, you can get in something like that. Oh no, no! You can get in if you're not that. That's not like an issue. If you want to like join i don't think we're gonna be that bad about it mm. um uh usually we just say hey we know this person is it cool for them to join and we usually just say sure mm. so like is it not okay yeah it's not okay <laughs> uh, actually that joke died so fast <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah okay is like one of the jokes the whole the whole team's joke no um <laughs> actually it is <laughs> <laughs> So, but anyway, um, with Team OK, so you're basically saying anyone could join if they just ask nicely or know someone inside, right? Yeah, I mean, like, the best way to know is know somebody from inside, but that doesn't mean, like, you just go to their house and be and say, love me, senpai. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That'd be joining Team OK. But no, um, I think we're a pretty open group. Um, it's just that we realized that it's a little big now, so we're kind of controlling the more flow? closed. Mm. Yeah, but... It's not like we have like a system of rules or something. In oh, fact, in- you do have a system of rules. I remember, right? Um. Oh my God, not that. <laughs> um. The not to do list. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, the not to do list. For those who don't know, um, the not to do list was actually originally a joke made by Ray and myself. I made the not to do list um as like a joke, like, hey, here's like this obviously not serious group. Let's have a not so serious rule set. <laughs> so, um, and I remember it was so jokey that most of the rules were directed to Rain. <laughs> like Rain never gets a Tumblr. We never have a podcast. We never take ourselves seriously, or something like that. Oh, no, um, no. Although we actually we disobey our, our own rules, even though they're not really our rules. <laughs> it's just like these are things that are okay. I mean, there's there's unspoken rules like um, if you can. Please don't be a jerk. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. um, don't try to talk over others. Although um, people will forgive you, it's sometimes annoying. You know, people, some things like that in a normal <laughs> Skype setting. But oh, yeah, yeah. other than that, we don't really have that much rules, and we have not had that for a long time. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but still, but still, it's one of those situations where it's a rule set that is really funny. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. Like. Let's make something that um, is a not to do list instead of a to do list. So true, uh, so true. Yeah. What's that? Actually, um, yeah. Carry on. I was going to say, I actually do have all the rules here if you want me to say them. Never mind, I'll uh. just put it in the link in the show notes so people can just read them and just see how silly it is. Yeah. So, getting back on track to you, that is, mm-hmm. um, you also do art, right? Oh, yeah, draw horses. 
Mm-hmm. You, you draw horses, and you also live stream drawing horses. Yes, I live stream um, people's requests of okay. drawing horses, and usually it's their original characters. Yay! <laughs> so, so it's basically like with Andy, is like Andy, 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 draw me outside. Um, but the funny thing is that used to be valid because Anty and I started as request streamers, <laughs> but Anty left that scene and I just didn't. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm gonna poke fun at him for that. Like, oh, you left your roots. Remember your roots. <laughs> Actually, I may have been wrong. I started up live streaming. He started request streaming, and then he started live streaming, and I started request streaming. <laughs> <laughs> I I need to poke him for that. Like, remember your roots. <laughs> Yeah, remember your roots and he drum OC. <laughs> and the funny thing thing about my OC though, he made it. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, uh, hey Anti, draw my OC. I made your OC. <laughs> okay. So uh, I I'm looking at your gallery on DeviantArt right now and your style your yeah. style is different. Like it's definitely different. Yeah, I mean it's not the normal kind of art that you see often because I have to say that the colors that's one of the things that is a bit different from everyone else it's actually funny that you mention colors because a lot of how I manage colors is from other people <laughs> oh really here's a good way uh, for those who don't know how to pick up color theory you can try to go for a definition and see like hey what is hue what is saturation you know get those definitions out of the way mm-hmm. and then just like um, kind of throw them in the trash because they don't really matter, just <laughs> definitions. And um, once you do that, then what you can do is that you take a piece that you really like. You know, say it's like, um, if we're going to talk about horse artists, John Oseko. Um, actually, I'm not going to use him for color references because I think that he's a good at color, but the ones I usually use is um, Spitfire Art, the gal behind As Spitfire. When the Aspect mm-hmm. Fire blogs, um, Inky Top Hat's another one. Like, I have a lot of freaking people um, that I studied, and I particularly took note of how um, Spitfire Art does her um, coloring. And um, basically, I just took a bunch of palettes of like gradients, hues, values, not really values, but mostly hues. Mm -hmm. And I would take that um, and I would study them. Like, um, is there a pattern? Um, What is the pattern? Why is it like that? And so that's why I actually have a backwards perspective of how color works. Because a lot of people, um, when they do um, coloring, um, they have the... When you're trying to do something bright, you use more saturation and in order to make something darker, you have um, less saturation. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it's the entire opposite. If you want um, something brighter, you have less saturation, and you have darker things, you have more saturation. And that's probably why my colors are different from some Normal. people. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at your gallery too at the same time while you're talking about that. And one thing, one thing that puts you apart is that your art is, or your ponies are really original in terms of how they look. And they are super cute and super <laughs> deformed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I put specific proportions on many things. Um, and the funny thing is, my style is a collage of many styles. Um, for example, I believe I got the roundish nose muzzle. Mm-hmm. That was from... A artist named Egophiliac. Oh, you may Ego. remember oh her. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember, remember, her. remember her from Moonstuck. Oh, I, I remember her from the other series. Um, oh, the grown no, up slice of life. Twins. Yeah, slice of life. I got that from her, and I was like, "This is a really cute style." And so I just took the muzzle style, and what I did with it is that um, I noticed that that there was a lot of round noses and I'm like, how am I going to express this to be male um, like the show does with kind of squarish noses? So that's what I did. I um, took a round form and then I squared it. <laughs> and that's um, that's one of the things that people notice is that when I draw a male horse, I draw a squarish little nose. Mm-hmm. And right. it still looks cute. So I've noticed that you have a 
picture called Wuna version 1 and version 2. Tell me about this one. I really like a lot of people's sketches. What I used to do was that um, I would um, take the original sketch and then put over line art, put coloring over it, do some shading, do some lighting, and basically make a full picture of just a sketch. As the description says right there, I did not do the original sketch. I always say that it's Crazy. by a different yeah. person mm. um, in the first paragraph with probably bull text. <laughs> that all right, all right. Know. I mean, uh, that's very important there. That's very important there. And yeah, you know, I, I can tell that you're working on colors instead of the line sketch and practiced, right? Yeah, it's actually, it's mostly practice and also mostly fun. <laughs> like, oh, no, true that, true um, that. It's like practice on how I do shading, but it's also how it's just like just fun to do that. And of course, I would always go to the original poster and say, hey, I did this. And if they wanted to take it down, I could take it down. But none of them said that. They were all amazed by <laughs> they were all amazed. That sounds so bad, but um... I mean, but still, uh, I I do enjoy the color that you try and do here because, like in Wuna version two, it's mm-hmm. really dark yet still bright. Oh yeah, that. Um, funny thing about that. So mm-hmm. I did Wuna version one. That version one's technically the first version, as I say there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I originally versioned it. In the second version, I just went over in grayscale and tried to fix it. <laughs> like, it took a lot of fixing um, because I accidentally did it on the wrong layer. Oh, so, God. Yeah, so I'm just like, uh, mm, great. <laughs> so, um, I just went over it um, and tried to fix um, it so that the colors are right. Um, and oh, so basically boys. the second one was just like, hey, here's a more darker, here's a more variant one. And interestingly enough, people have mixed um, reviews about which one's better. Oh, okay. Um, which one they like more? Because I remember like some people from Derby Brew like the first version. Mm-hmm. I posted multiple sites, by the way, and um, Derby Brew was one of them. Derby Brew, a lot of people like the version one, I believe, more. DeviantArt liked the darker version more. <laughs> Tumblr version, I think. Well, they were on the same post. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. And the original artist would usually be there and say that it's good or something. And I actually, I still have their messages on my Tumblr feed. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, so it's like, it's like great. Simba noticed me. And interestingly enough, one of the artists that I really liked and I um, drew over, <laughs> um, that person did some coloring before him, but I noticed that quite a bit were sketches. Or right. at least that's what I noticed, sketches. And... Then after I did the coloring, I saw like one or month, one or two months later, I saw a bunch of coloring from this guy. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Actually, funnily enough, it's not a guy. It's a uh, girl. But uh, uh, right. anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wow. It's great to see this person coloring. You know, they have such a great sketch style. So if you can give inspiration, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah. That was great um, to do that. It was just kind of like a fun thing. Like, hey. I did not do the original sketch. It was kind of like a promotion thing. Like, hey, look at this awesome artist. So yeah. look, at how, look at how good their drawings are. Go watch them. <laughs> so um, now the obvious question is right now, mm-hmm. what are your tools of the trade? My tools of trade are coffee now. Um, <laughs> Co- coffee is very important for any artist. I can, actually, funnily I can enough, that. funnily enough, some people actually paint with coffee. <laughs> really? Yeah. Paint with coffee? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's an actual thing. It's uh, I, I know, I know. Uh, I'm uh, just wondering, like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yay! So actually, uh, paint with coffee. Um, anyway, one of my tools of trade. Um, mm-hmm. I use an iMac, um, five years old. <laughs> mm. It's still living, thank God. Um, and I have... Um, Sorry, I'm getting it right now. Um, uh, it's cool, it's cool. You can hear my freaking chair. Okay, Yay. so here is the in- Intuos uh, 5. Uh-huh. But here's the thing. For those who actually want to get this type of tablet, here's a little tip about buying these tablets. Um, the people behind, uh, the manufacturing company behind this, Wacom, mm. they changed the names, and it became a lot more confusing so basically there was three lines there were three major tablets lines that they made bamboo 
Intuos, and Cintiq. I still want to say Cintiq, but <laughs> say Cintiq. Um, and it was really just those three. Very distinct. Bamboo was the cheapest one and the least performance. Intuos was in the medium slash um, advanced bamboo, and Cintiq was the ex- most expensive one. Uh, because it's basically a computer monitor with a touchscreen. But anyway. <laughs> um, so what ended up happening was that they took the bamboos and like, hey, you know this, this distinct brand name? Yeah. We're going to throw that away and instead replace it with an already brand name, Intuos. So yeah. the bamboos are the Intuos. So um, what about the Intuos 5? Well, you would think it would still be Intuos 5, right? Mm-hmm. Wrong. It's called Intuos Pro. Oh, God. And so now the in, the Bamboo, or Intuos, Intuos 5 is Intuos Pro, and Intuos 1, 2, 3, and 4 are Intuos 1, 2, 3, and 4. Oh, God. Why? why? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm already confused. No. Yeah, so do your research, kids. Uh, a tablet is still a tablet. As much as I like my Intuos, I have to admit... There really isn't that much of a difference between Bamboo and Intuos. Like, mm-hmm. there's more pressure sensitivity, but you may not really notice it. Mm-hmm. Like, I know, like, quite a bit of artists, like, um, some of you that are really into Tumblr may know, um, the guy behind Lunar After Dark. Um, oh, yeah. Um, Ed Herney. Ed actually draws with a bamboo. Mm-hmm. Um, and he draws really good stuff. So, um, that just goes to show you that. Um, that you don't really need good tools in order to be a good artist. Um, it just true, depends true. on your personal um preference. True, true, and also your skill because well, you can play video games, you can play fighting games on a D pad or arcade stick. As long as you're good, you can go on both worlds. Yeah, that's actually funny because interesting enough that you talk about games and p- different peripherals. Because I remember when Mario Party, not Mario <laughs> Party, um, I'm not. Smash- I'm not- not Smash. Uh, sorry, Mario Kart. Oh yeah. Uh, Mario Kart for the Wii came out, and oh, every- God, no. and everybody hated the wheel. Yeah. Guess what? I'm actually good at the wheel. <laughs> I actually uh, love the wheel. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Personally, for me, I can't. The, the wheel. <sighs> no, I understand why people don't like it. No, I understand. Yeah. But like for me, I am a big arcade nerd. So. Mm. The fact that it was something that was kind of like the arcade, yeah. um, and it was it was pretty responsive. It wasn't the most precise thing in the world, but it was pretty good actually for the time. Um, and so everybody was like, and even still today, everybody hates um, the Wii wheel. And I'm just like, I actually like it. <laughs> and I like get get on my level GameCube controller <laughs> scrub. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you win, you win. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, but in the end, in the end, it's a matter of are you enjoying it or not? Yeah, um, I think that is something to take into account because, of course, a lot of artists go in because they like to do fun. Mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. you know, there's just some artists that um, go out to try to be popular. And, oh, yeah, no. um, and I would have to admit, some are successful. That's just yeah. how, how it rolls. But um, in the end, you might want to try to find something that you have fun with because I mean here you are you, you kind of have your butt glued to a chair for like four to five hours maybe a couple days mm-hmm. um, or weeks or something um, hopefully not literally and <laughs> um, and you're just kind of sitting here looking at a monitor um, oh, so I hope you like that because the health benefits are, are certainly going to bite you in the butt <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, what you did there Yes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but still, but still. Uh, in in the end, in, in the end, it's you have to enjoy what you're doing. That's the most important part. Yeah, I think that, um, especially because popularity is not reliable. Mm. I don't see that right now because, I mean, um, I I make jokes of this. Um, Whenever I try to send something to Equestria Daily, I'm like, one day I'll get on the draw friends. One <laughs> day. But no, I, I never do. And I and I do as a joke. But a lot of artists are like, why? Why aren't you on the draw friend? And I told them that I asked the same exact question to Seth, um, the guy <laughs> behind Equestria Daily. And he's just like, 
something about quality assurance or something. I'm mm-hmm. like, what is this? You don't have this in the rules. And so I go, go to Calpane, um, and Calpane is like, oh, actually, no, no, that's not what he meant. All he meant was just that he didn't like your work. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Whoa. Like, uh, uh, Calpane, elements of honesty. <laughs> Sick burn. But no, seriously. Um, I think that it's just that people think that I should be more popular. And I'm just like, meh. I think you can relate a little bit with that um, in that, that it'd be good to get more viewers, but mm-hmm. it, as long as somebody likes it, because like, what I try to do with my art is I try to make people happy. I try to make people laugh. And overall, overall good vibes, man. Mm, true, 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 true. And as long as it's doing that, I'm good, like... As much as I would like to do it mass audience so that more and more people would be happy and, and stuff. At the same time, I don't really expect that to happen. Because, hey, people like some things and people don't like other things. And that's fine. And people just, they have their own opinions. And that's completely fine. So it's just like, in the end, do it because you want to do it. Because relying on popularity is not going to be as reliable as doing it because you want to do it. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So, anywho, um, that was very serious, very, very serious talk. <laughs> yeah, this is very serious talk. I'm in a serious mood, man. But no. Yay. But no, um, but you said you do streaming, right? So, yes. When is that and how do you do that? It's on Saturdays. Mm. Saturdays at 4 p.m. featuring Captain 64. Now, how that works is that, bear in mind, I'm not an engineer, so I don't exactly know how this works. But basically, yeah. um, the simplicity of it is just that I live stream, I stream in um, a video format what is happening on my desktop, and people mm-hmm. look at that. At the same time, they also have their own text chat. Mm-hmm. And they go to this text chat, um, and when I say requests are open... Then they would type in the request, say, draw my OC, um, <laughs> which I get quite a bit. And um, then I'm like, okay, I get that. And if there's multiple people, because sometimes um, the stream is not that popular because there's other streamers streaming. Mm-hmm. That's fine. And if it's multiple, then I get all the requests and I put them um I have this website that has a wheel. Oh, okay. And I put all the requests in their own individual categories, and then I spin the wheel, and whoever, whatever the wheel stops on gets the request. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and I find it the most fair instead of first come, first serve, which was the original method. And as much as I like that method, it's just not good for the viewers. <laughs> um, yeah. So... Um, and it's just not really that fair, really, because some people are more open than others. So it's just like, hey, um, as much as I do try to do the stuff that the people that are actually watching, instead mm-hmm. of the people that are just like, here's my request, I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, all right. I learned from that one. So mm-hmm. um, and I try to have importance on the, on the people that are still on the stream. But yeah, I mean, that's just what I do. That's how the system works. And then I draw whatever they request me to draw. And I would draw a sketch, um, light sketch. Barely anybody can tell what I'm sketching. <laughs> and, um, and then I paint over it uh, without mm-hmm. really using lines. Similar to how I did the, the banner we have here, actually. Um, but this banner obviously took much longer than I would there. <laughs> oh, all right. So. Yeah, it looks good. And yeah, uh, basically what you do is you start your stream, people go there, and they just request things from you. Yeah. Simple, simple enough. Simple enough. Simple enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have my mic on, I'm talking like a Skype group, or I just have my mic on in general, and sometimes I just play music. Uh, so like your standard streamers then, all right? Yep. So how can people reach you, man? I am on DeviantArt, Tumblr... I have a Derby Brew account, but nobody can follow that. <laughs> yeah. So, I do have those things. And also, I may be making my own Tumblr blog. Ooh. Um, 
Yeah, it's not exactly an ass bug, actually. Ah. Although I'm thinking about one. But, um... Yeah, it would be called Pinky Lessons. I already have the URL on ready. It's just going to be a slice of life kind of Tumblr blog, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I can't wait to follow it. I can't wait to follow it. I can't wait to draw it. So basically, that's where they can find you then. All right, cool. So anywho, Cap, thank you for coming on, man. You've been an awesome guest. No problem. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You've been an awesome host, man. Uh, so, uh, Great talking uh, to you. I mean, so basically, people can find you on your DeviantArt and Tumblr and also the Viburu, but they can follow you there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's basically how, how it goes. And I also have an ink button. No, I don't have an ink button. <laughs> I'll, I'll just link everything in the show notes so people can follow you then. Okay. Anyway, right, yeah. th- thanks a lot, Cap. Thanks a lot. And No, no problem. Yeah, and let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is going to be news time. So Cap, can you join us for this? You know, hold on. I I think I have to use the restroom. I I gotta I gotta go. Uh, I have to find a restroom in the Mexican Hall restaurant. Hopefully, um, Rom and James gets back. But yeah, I I gotta get out of my burrito seat <laughs> and go. Thank you all for having me. I'm gonna see you guys later. All right, thanks, Caps. Uh, and you're always welcome to come on, man. And uh, go have fun and don't get lost. Thanks. All right, bye, man. Bye. See you. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. Part of the news was specially crafted by Puffy Smosh. She did two parts of the news, so thank you, her and Rom. Carry on. You let Puffy do the news? Right, kind of. See how the, okay, let's see how this works out. Yeah, indeed. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Romy Wald, and this is the NBA Show News Time. In today's news, full-length pony movie announced for 2017. During Hasbro's third quarter investment call, Hasbro Studios has greenlight the production of full-length My Little Pony movie. Stated to come out in 2017, the movie will be scripted by Joel Balarani, while Megan McCartney has taken up the position for co-producer. And according to a recent tweet by Megan, she has implied that the movie still involved the fourth-generation main six. Links can be found in the show notes below. Oh, wow. Movie, a pony movie finally coming out after a lot of nagging from the fans about, oh, why can't we have a pony movie? Why can't we have a pony movie? <sighs> I just hope Hasbro doesn't turn to Sega and start listening to all the Sonic fanboys. <laughs> no offense, guys, but seriously. Well, I got no idea. But uh, after the two movies that they did, Equestria Girls and Rainbow Rocks, um, uh, finally a pony movie after what? A few sort of after the third try, why not? Right, uh, mm-hmm. it's slated to come out on in 2017, and the movie's being produced by uh, sorry, it's going to be made by All Spark Productions, uh, that's Hasbro's new production house. So, yay, cool! So, finally, we get to see ponies on the big screen. I hope they come out in my country. Yep. Finally, I can see ponies in the big screen. Yay. If not, there's always cam rips. I don't want cam rips. I want to support them. If Rainbow Rocks and Equestria Girls were on theaters, I would pay money to see it. But, eh, they didn't. I know, I know. But sometimes when you just can't get it, you just have to go the other way. Yeah, true. I mean, if you really, 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 really want it. Yeah, if you can't wait until the DVD or Blu-ray. But seeing that the DVD and Blu-ray for Rainbow Rocks is coming out, might as well spend money there. It is? Well, yeah. It's, well, it's technically coming out for the States. I'm not sure about Europe and Asia yet. Well, I'm pretty sure we can like order like overseas package oh, yeah. or something. I don't know. <laughs> Problem is about the DVDs. They're region lock. So, yeah. Ah, well, nothing a good hacking program can fix. <laughs> uh, probably. <laughs> but anywho, next news. In the next news, two new issues of My Little Pony Comic and Friends Forever announced for 2015. Are you interested in My Little Pony Comics? If you are, we have great news for you. IDW has announced that they will, there will be two My Little Pony Comics planned for January 2015. The first comic is the My Little Pony Comics issue 27, written by Katie Cook and art by Andy Price. The second one is My Little Pony Friends Forever issue 13, written by Jeremy Whitley and art by Agnes Karbovska. Is that how I pronounce it? Uh, let me see. I apologize if I mispronounced and butchered someone's name. I am terrible with names. I Karpovska. I guess so. <laughs> Karpovska. 
I think she's Polish. That's cool. Mm, probably, I got no idea. But yay, new comic coming out. Woohoo! And this one, uh, issue twenty-seven of the comic. This one is going to be drawn by the dynamic duo, Kitty oh. Cooking and Andy Price. I've heard many good praise about these two. Yep, they do good. They do good. Rocky start, but um, their combos—they're pretty good. Those two mm, work together well. And this one, uh, issue twenty-seven, involves Timberwolves invades no. Ponyville. I got no idea what else. So can't wait to read it. And as for Friends Forever Thirteen, that one involves the pairing of Rarity and Babseed. That is uh, an interesting combo, if, if, if I might say so myself. Sweet. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder what story they can tell, because they don't have much interaction at all. Like, they did interact a bit in the comics, but in show, oof, it's kind of hard, if you know what I mean. I'm pretty sure they'll come up with something interesting, no doubt. Probably. I hope so. I hope so. It's just one of those strange reoccurrence that I hope they manage to pull it off because uh, the Rainbow Dash and Trixie combo was a bit strange, but they pulled it off pretty well. Well, I haven't got to that part yet, so I can't really tell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, anywho, moving on to the next one, Rob. And last but not least, Nicola Oliver and Tabitha St. Germain announce Forever Free Northwest 2015. Our good friends Never Free Not West has announced that Nicole Oliver and Tabitha St. Germain will be at this year's con. Be sure to keep an eye on the website for more information. Yay! So, if you are going to Ever Free North West this May, be sure to take note that your favorite voice actress, Princess Person, are going there. Woohoo! Princess Person? You know what I mean, Princess Ponies. <laughs> Alright, you're the boss. Oh, come on. If you got something better, then say so, Her man. Majesty! The uh, great and wonderful, the one and only princess person. Seriously? <laughs> I don't know. But anywho, as for now, children under 12 years old enter for free. And for a three-day ticket pass, is for $55.00. I say that's a bargain steal. So, yay. Uh, if you want more information, go to everfreenw.com. They are coming back on May 29th to 31st at the Hilton Seattle Airport and Conference Center, Seattle, Washington. So, yay. If you're going, do let me know because I want to hear everything that you experience. Make me jelly. Why not? You know, you. Okay, anywho, <laughs> uh, jealousy aside, um, is that all, Rom? Yes, that's all for the news. All right. I'm Rom Yald with the NBA Show News. Back to you, Norman. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Puffy. Thank you for the news. You did a great job. Thank you so much. And Just a side note, grammar. <laughs> I that probably might, I probably did some editing on my dad part, but still, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, <laughs> um, shout outs. So, Rom, you got any shout outs? Hi, Mom. Mom? Also, a shout out to Pusheen the cat. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday? Who's that? You don't know Pusheen the cat? No, I don't. Get out of here. Okay, uh, link me. Link me, and I'll do my shout outs. So, okay. anywho, my shout out goes to Cap. Thank you for coming on. Um, I'm sorry that you had to go find Mexican food. I don't know. We're in a Mexican restaurant right now, so yay. So, anywho, um, Wait, thank we're you. doing the podcast from a restaurant. Yep, <laughs> deal with it. Okay. So, anywho, thank you so much, Cap, for coming on and sharing your stories with us, and also to you, Rom. Thank you for being with me in this restaurant. No problem. And to I like some fries with that, please. I don't know if they have fries in the Mexican restaurant, but anyway, uh. And thank you also to James, who is probably stumbling around. Oh, please do come back safe. And Rom, you found that picture for the cat yet? I'm on it. This oh, there we go. All right. Okay. Anywho, uh, also, um, I recently did a video with Hero of Time, the developer of Octavia's Underworld Cello.
Thank you for sharing your games with me and for the live stream. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash hero of time 1000. That's all one word. You can check out his video there and find links to where you can download the game and also his DeviantArt, hero of time 1000.deviantart.com. There too, you can get the game. So be sure to get the beta release of the game this Halloween. Play a scary game on Halloween's day. Ooh, scary. And you found a picture of the kitty? Yes, I linked it. There it is. Let me see, let me see. Check the Facebook, get a hazard. Oh, this one! Oh, so cute! I know, right? I know. (laughs) Uh, So this is your shout-out to her? Yep. Oh, yay. I love that kitty. (laughs) Ah, so cute. So anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MB show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetie Bot will probably not do anything much for this one because James is kind of preoccupied. Yay! And you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about food toys and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently, what's tickling my fancy is food. I love food. Yay. And, Rom, where can I find you? You can find me at berliciousgallery.tumblr.com because I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can catch us on ponyvillelife.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Romuald. And Rom, take us out. And we will see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. See ya.